That nagging, private, and totally unwanted sound, maybe it's a high-pitched whine or a low hum, a relentless buzz or a chaotic hiss, if you're here, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've probably searched online for answers. Maybe you've tried supplements, or you've been told it's just something you have to live with. The search for silence can feel lonely and frankly, kind of desperate. But what if the way we've been thinking about the problem is just wrong? Before you waste money on another so-called miracle cure, what if the real answer to that maddening ringing in your ears isn't a pill, but a way to completely change how you hear the world? This is the story of a paradox. It's about how turning the volume up can, believe it or not, bring you peace and quiet. Now, I'm not talking about just masking the tinnitus sound or drowning it out. We're talking about a fundamental shift in understanding what that ringing or buzzing or humming sound really is. And more importantly, what your brain is desperately trying to tell you. Stick with me, because this explanation might just change everything you thought you knew about tinnitus. Hi, I'm Dr. Lane Garrett, founder of Timpanogos Hearing and Tinnitus in Utah. I've been treating tinnitus for over 20 years and have helped thousands of people find lasting, true, relief. And I'm proud to say that our clinic was recently recognized as one of the first modern tinnitus specialty centers. First, let's clear up a huge misconception. For most people, tinnitus isn't really an ear problem. Your ears might be where the trouble starts, but the real show is happening upstairs in your brain. In fact, research shows that a staggering 90% of people with chronic tinnitus also have some level of hearing loss. It can be so subtle that you don't even notice it in your daily life, but it's there. Think of your brain's hearing system like a high-tech sound booth. For your entire life, it's been getting a rich, full spectrum of sound from the ears. The deep rumble of thunder, the complex notes in your favorite song, the high-pitched chirp of birds, and it has a perfect memory of what the world is supposed to sound like. Now, imagine that because of age, noise exposure, or something else, some of these frequencies start to fade. The tiny nerve endings in your inner ear that pick up those specific pitches starts to get damaged. The signal gets lost. From your brain's perspective, it's as if the whole section of the orchestra just went silent. What happens next is a phenomenon some researchers call an increase in central gain. In its attempt to hear those missing sounds, the brain basically cranks up the volume on its internal amplifier. It starts straining to hear no sounds that are no longer coming in. And in that straining overcompensation, the brain itself starts to generate a phantom signal. That sound, that ringing and buzzing, is the sound of your brain trying to fill in those blanks. It's a neurological echo in a chamber that has become too quiet at a very specific pitch. So the ringing isn't the real problem, it's a symptom. It's a distress signal from your brain that it's being starved of sound information that it craves. New research increasingly frames tinnitus as a brain disorder linked to this kind of hyperactivity, not an ear issue. Understanding this is the absolute key. You don't need to fight the noise, you need to feed the silence. Quick pause for a second. If you can do me a favor, I'd really appreciate it. If you're learning something new, give this video a like so others can find it more easily. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel as well. We also put together a free book called Take Your Life Back that answers a lot of questions we hear in our clinic about tinnitus every day, as well as an explanation of scientifically backed treatment options. You can download it for free. Just check for the link in the description below. This brings us back to the paradox, turning up the sound to find the quiet. This isn't just a clever line. It's based on a remarkable and empowering ability our brains have called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is simply the brain's ability to rewire itself to adapt and learn new ways of doing things. It's how we learn new languages or new skills, and it's the engine that can drive tinnitus so far into the background you forget that it's even there. So how do we use it? We give the brain what it's looking for. Think of it like being thirsty. When you're dehydrated, your body sends a powerful signal, thirst. You can try to ignore it or distract yourself, but that feeling will stick around and probably get stronger. The only real solution is to give your body what it wants, water. Tinnitus is the brain's thirst for sound. Instead of trying to ignore it, we give it the very frequencies it's been missing. The most common and effective way to do this is with well-fit, modern hearing devices. When you see an audiologist, they can perform a hearing test that maps out your hearing profile with incredible precision. They can see the exact frequencies where your hearing has dropped off. Then a hearing aid can be specifically programmed to amplify only those missing sounds, bringing them back into your life. Suddenly your brain's auditory centers get flooded with the rich, detailed environmental sounds they've been starved of. This works on a few levels all at the same time. First, 
Simple amplification and masking. By turning up the volume on the world around you, the quiet hum of the fridge, the rustles of leaves and conversations across the room, you shrink the contrast between the outside world and your internal tinnitus. The tinnitus is still there, but it's not the only thing left on stage. The increased ambient sound naturally starts to mask the phantom noise, pushing it out of focus. But it goes much deeper. Remember that central gain we talked about a few minutes ago? The brain turning its own volume knob to 11? When you reintroduce those missing sounds, your brain can finally relax. It doesn't have to strain anymore. The auditory system gets the stimulation it was looking for, and it can start to dial back that internal frantic amplification. The ultimate goal here is a process called habituation. Habituation is a form of neuroplasticity where your brain learns to reclassify the tinnitus signal as unimportant background noise. We all do this constantly. If you move to a house near a busy road, you eventually stop hearing the traffic. Your brain learns that's not a threat and just filters it out. Consistently using sound amplification helps the brain to do exactly the same thing with your tinnitus. By constantly being bathed in a rich world full of external sounds, the brain learns that the internal ringing isn't a signal it needs to monitor anymore. Over time, it'll fade from your conscious awareness. Might not vanish completely, but it becomes something you rarely if ever notice, even in quiet environments. So how do you actually do this? This isn't a DIY project. The path forward is all about getting professional, personalized guidance. At Timpanogos Hearing and Tinnitus, the first step, and this is the most crucial one, is a comprehensive hearing and tinnitus evaluation from a tinnitus expert. We get detailed histories of your tinnitus symptoms and run full batteries of tests on your entire auditory system. This isn't just a pass fail or a basic hearing test where you hear the beeps and press the button. You need a much more detailed map of your unique auditory world. Based on that map, we can recommend a personalized treatment plan. If hearing loss is part of the picture, the primary recommendation is often hearing aids. And it's important to know that today's hearing devices are incredibly sophisticated and discreet. They're not the clunky old amplifiers of the past. Many modern hearing devices come with features specifically designed for tinnitus. These can include integrated sound therapy programs that play gentle, soothing background noises, nature sounds, or even specialized music sounds called fractal tones. These are customizable and can be set to a level that blends with your tinnitus, making it less intrusive and helps that habituation process along. The idea is to calm down the overstimulated part of your brain that's creating that tinnitus without getting in the way of you hearing everything else. The proof is in the results. Multiple studies and surveys show that the overwhelming majority of people with tinnitus get some level of relief with properly fitted hearing devices. It's well supported, non-invasive, and an effective strategy for taking back control endorsed by the American Academy of Otolaryngology. Our treatment plans for tinnitus may also include Lanier, the first FDA-approved treatment device for tinnitus. A study recently published in the journal Nature found that when Lanier is used in addition to hearing aids, over 90% of patients experienced a significant decrease in their tinnitus. We also include our proprietary My Tinnitus Therapy course, which teaches coping and relaxation techniques that have been shown to reduce bothersome tinnitus. And as one of the first modern tinnitus specialties centers in the United States, we can also monitor important biomarkers related to tinnitus to help fine-tune your treatment plans as we go forward. If you've been living with the frustration and loneliness of tinnitus, I want you to feel a real sense of hope. You're not powerless and you definitely don't have to live with it. There is a logical, science-based path you can take. The secret to quiet for so many people isn't found in blocking out the world, it's found in letting the world back in. It's about working with your brain's amazing ability to adapt not fighting against it. By feeding your brain's hunger for sound, you can teach it to ignore the phantom noise it created in the silence. You can change how you hear the world and in doing so, rediscover the peace and quiet you thought you'd lost forever. This isn't a magic pill. It's a journey of retraining your brain, but it's a journey that can lead you back out of the noise and back into a life of calm. If you're here in Utah and want to take the next step, we'd love to see you at Timpanogos Hearing and Tinnitus. I'll leave a link to our website below. If you're outside of Utah, I'll leave a link to other modern tinnitus specialty centers in the United States and a link to Lanier where you can find tinnitus specialists in your area to help you get relief as well. Thanks for watching.